Hey there folks and welcome to what the JavaScript. Today we'll look into pagination using GraphQL. So we have this list of start repositories for two users and now I'm looking at adding a couple of load more buttons for each of the users. So uh, up till now we have only loaded six repositories but we want to add a button here uh, called let's say load more and clicking on that button should load the next set of repositories. So before I do that, let's look into the query that we are using here. So this is a query which is running and it's fetching us six repositories. Next, uh, we want to uh, look into how we can uh, get the next set of start repositories from here. And in order to use that, we will use something called before. Uh, so as a doc says uh, that providing a before returns the elements in the list that they, that come before the specified cursor. But what exactly is this cursor? In order to understand this, let's look into some docs that we have on GraphQL pagination. Uh, these are the official docs and as always you'll find all the links in the description. So here we have uh, something like a friends field that we are querying upon and we're passing in first which is a number two and an offset two. So this offset would tell the GraphQL resolver on the backend to fetch the next set of results, which are after the second, second one. So this offset tells it to skip over the first two one and get, get us the next set of results. Another way to do that is using after, which we can pass a friend ID and it would then fetch the next set of friends. Uh, which, are, which are present after this friend ID. The third set, uh, the third uh, concept that we want to pro, uh, use here is called cursor. So cursor is something like a pointer to that location which we are uh, fetching the results upon. So here we have friends, uh, we are requesting for the first two, but they should come after this friend cursor. And this friend cursor, it's the location of this results and it's actually very similar to the database cursor when we are uh, querying the data. Uh, so we here we have a sample query where we have the hero, we have the name, friends, the first two which are being requested and b uh, besides the uh, name that we are requesting, we are also fetching the cursor here which later we can use. So let's look into how we can use this cursor in this query that we have here. So we know that this before we have to pass some cursor value, but in order to fetch that cursor value, I'll, I'll just first get rid of this one. Inside the edges, I'll look into what we are getting beside the node. So we are also getting the cursor value. If I add this and run the query, uh, I can see that in the edges, now I'm also getting this cursor value, which is the location uh, that this particular edge has. So I could potentially use this and pass it into the start repositories before parameter to get the results that were coming before this. And we, we should be getting this cursor value for each and every edge. And one more way to uh, simplify this problem is that we can even look into what we have in the start repositories and use something called page info, which GitHub API provides us. So if I just look into what fields that this one has, I can see that it has a end cursor, has next page, has previous page and a start cursor. So I can see that the has previous page says that when paginating backwards, are there more items? So we definitely need this to render the load more button. So I'll just request for this and I'll also get a start cursor which is uh, when paginating backwards, the cursor that we want to continue. So there are two uh, options that we can use uh, to use these cursor values. Either we could look into directly the last edge. Uh, I'll just run this query and see the results. So either we can look into the last cursor in uh, the last edge and, the, and use the cursor value from there, or we could directly use the page info and use the start cursor and both of these should give us the required result. So let's look into the last set of things that we're getting here. So 
here we have the cursor which is something like this and if we try to find the page info here page info that's the page info so here's the page info and here we're getting the start cursor which is something like this and we can see that this is the same cursor that this particular edge has so we're getting the uh, particular cursor that we can use now we can get rid of this cursor from the edges because we'll directly use the one from page info so i'll run the query again and there we have it now that we have the start cursor let's modify this query to accept a variable called cursor which should be a string and now we can use this cursor variable and pass it to the before argument of start repositories so i'll just say cursor so now we can pass a cursor to this query and it should fetch us the next set of results so right now we are getting the first result as ff send so let's see if we pass the start cursor that we're getting from the page info as a variable and see how the query changes so i'll just add a variable cursor add the value here and run the query so now we got the next set of bad the next batch of results uh, the first one is running elastic search fun profit so looks like our query is working and yeah if we don't need this cursor value we can just pass in something like null and it should also work and now we're getting the same result that we got the first time which is ff send so now we can use uh, now we can actually modify the query that we have for a column component to use this same information so i'll just get rid of this sidebar and we have this query so i'll just update my query here so we added a cursor and it is a string we also passed it as a before argument to start repositories so here i'll just add it before and pass in the cursor as a default value we will just need to pass in the variables cursor as null and our application should be working just like before so if i go back cool so things are working normally now we just need to make use of the page info that we got here and before that i'll just add the page info to the query so we added this inside the start repositories so i added it here hit save and things should be working cool now we can make use of this start cursor and paginate over this so if i come down look into my component and yeah so first we need a load more button here so i'll just add it cool so we're looking at uh, let's look into the result first so we have inside data user start repositories and page info so i'll just get this information so data dot user dot star repositories dot page info dot has previous page so if it has this we can just render a button which says load more and i think i have to import this button i'll just import it import button from button hit save cool so it's looking fine you can just maybe style it a bit better so i'll just say css flex one of oh, i'll just say width 100 percent cool so there we have our load more button and now we just need to make this work looking into the apollo talks on pagination uh, there are a lot of approaches that we can use to make this pagination work and it involves using the fetch more this is exposed on the data prop by the graphql higher order component or the render prop component 
in our case which is the query component so this should be available to us here so I should be able to restructure it from here fetch more and th they are suggesting some of the approaches that we can use so one is the offset based approach that we discussed earlier but for a particular case we are looking at something like a cursor based approach here, here they have a cursor based approach and if I scroll down we have the relay style cursor pagination which is very similar to how uh, github api has implemented their pagination so i think either we can go with the relay style cursor pagination or cursor based pagination approach both are quite similar that they involve using a cursor to get the next batch of results so let's look into this relay style cursor pagination uh, so they have added a on load more and it is just invoking this fetch more which is accepting uh, variables and an update query key so we won't be needing this update query key right now straight away but let's just take the variables and pass in our, uh, pass in our uh, start cursor that we're getting from here so the start cursor and let's pass this and see what we get in the next results so I'll just go to the button and add an on click so on click and we just want to call this fetch more here I'll just pass the variables inside the variables I can pass the cursor which would be uh, data dot user dot start repositories dot start cursor so I'll just say data dot user dot start repositories dot page info dot start cursor so let's see what we're getting now go back into the application hit on load more oops uh, looks like we forgot to pass the update query option which is required and this function defines how to update the query data with the new results so if I go back to the documentation uh, we use this update query function to just take the previous results and take the new batch of results that that are present in this fetch more result and combine both of them to get us the next batch so we just want to take the previous set of edges that we're getting if you look at the data here so we just want to take these edges that we had from earlier and combine them with the new set of edges so that we have all the all the set of repositories running on our application so i'll just go back here and update query which is our new key here mm, and here i'll just move this here and uh, so we just take the previous results and combine them with a new batch so I'll just say this update query is a function which will be taking the previous ones and get the fetch more result destructured and now we just want to return the set of results here uh, if I go back to the query we have user and inside the user we just want to combine the start repositories from the previous ones and the new ones so i'll just say if there are no fetch more results then we just return the previous ones otherwise we'll just return something from here so return a query is for the user query so i'll say user and inside the user i'm just going to take the previous one so i'll just take the previous dot user and now we just want to take the start repositories so start repositories should be in the start repositories we actually want to combine the edges so 
uh, but, but we want, also want to take the page info that was uh, provided right now in the fetch more results because the uh, page info would be latest on this one so i'll just say fetch more result dot uh, user dot start repositories so take everything from the latest one and as for the edges we want to override the previous ones that we had so i'll just take the previous dot user dot start repositories dot edges and i'm going to just combine them with the new ones so i'll just provide here fetch more result dot user dot star repositories dot edges cool so this looks about right we are taking the user one uh, the user query that we had from earlier took everything from the previous query but provided a custom implementation for the start repositories uh, which took everything from the user dot start repositories uh, from here this one this query took it from the new batch so that we had then updated page info and as for the edges I, I just took the previous ones and combined them with the new ones so this should be probably working so I'll just give save and see Hit load more and yep looks like it's working so we're able to just page in it over the data infinitely we'll check here as well and see if it's working Cool. So this was about it for the pagination and stay tuned for the next episode where we go into some more depth on GraphQL. Take care.